good to have you. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Janice and I want to welcome you to my cyber place. Today I want to talk about when waiting sucks. Um, so God's really put Psalms 106 on my heart um, last night and I just knew that I was supposed to share it with you. It has to be a really quick video because it's my son's 13th birthday. I can hardly believe it, but my, my oldest son is 13. I now am a mother of a teenager. Oh, crazy. Anyway, um, so I just want to go watch a movie with him and hang out and just spend some time with him. And we had some cupcakes and he already had his party. So tonight's just like a family birthday. So I have to be quick, but I want to share something with you really quick. So Psalms 106 says, Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Who can list the glorious miracles of the Lord? Who can ever praise him enough? There is joy for those who deal justly with others and always do what is right. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come near and rescue me. Let me share in the prosperity of your chosen ones. Let me rejoice in the joy of your people. Let me praise you with those who are your heritage. Like our ancestors, we have sinned, we have done wrong, we have acted wickedly, and our ancestors in Egypt were not impressed by the Lord's miraculous deeds. They soon forgot his many acts and kindness to them. Instead, they rebelled against him at the Red Sea. Even so, he saved them to defend the honor of his name and to demonstrate his mighty power. He commanded the Red Sea to dry up. He led Israel across the sea as if it were a desert, and so he rescued them from their enemies and redeemed them from their foes. Then the water returned and covered their enemies. Not one of them survived. Then his people believed his promises and they sang his praise. Yet, how quickly they forgot what he had done. They wouldn't wait for his counsel. In the wilderness, their desires ran wild, testing God's patient in that dry wasteland. So he gave them what they asked for, but he sent a plague along with it. So I just want to stop there for a quick second. So desires running wild is the same thing as lust. Um, and it doesn't actually mean sexual lust. It means like to lust after something means to want something, to desire something so badly that you cannot be happy without it. Um, that That's the true definition of lust here that it's speaking of. Um, being patient doesn't just mean waiting on God. Being patient means waiting on God with a good attitude. Um, so recently I thought that there was an answer to my prayer coming and I was very excited and everything in me just really thought this was it. Um, and it's been a long time prayer, like a really, really long time prayer. And when I found out it wasn't quite here, I for about half a day was just moping around. I felt really discouraged. I literally laid on my couch for half a day. That's not like me at all. Um, and I was just so discouraged and then Holy Spirit started whispering to my heart just about how being patient in Him is so important and being patient in Him is only true and godly patience when you're waiting and patiently waiting with a good attitude. We can wait and that's fine, we have no choice to wait. But it's our attitude that says everything and patience is only developed in trials. So when we're waiting on God to answer something and we don't understand why he hasn't answered it yet, it's because we just haven't developed enough patience, yes, I guess. Um, so I just want to encourage you when you're feeling frustrated and you don't understand why he's not answering the prayer and it, it feels like you're out of time and, and you're stressed or you're sad or your heart's grieving for somebody, um, just remember that true patience is when we have a good attitude. Um, it takes humility and just like Mary was so humble when when God told her like you're gonna be overshadowed and you're gonna have a baby and whatever she was humble she said Lord let it be to me as you have said um, that's the kind of heart I want to have I want to have a heart that's humble toward my God um, that knows that he loves me and he wouldn't withhold anything good for me and if he's holding out on something if he's waiting there's a reason for it and it's a good reason um, Real trust in God can only come from humility. We can only trust him when we're willing to, to just say, okay, God, like your way, your way. That's what I want. Um, and we need to remember all the times that we thought that things should have been a certain way. Like I remember when we were house hunting. Oh my goodness. 
it was such a battle. It was such a struggle. We had six kids in eight years. So our house was like overridden with children. And we started in that house with no kids. And then we, we really outgrew it really fast. And it was frustrating. And there was no place to put anything away. All of the rooms, including our master bedroom, had single closets. Like it was just, it just didn't feel like the right fit for our family. And it was tough. Uh, so I prayed and 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 I prayed for a house and it just seemed like either our house wouldn't sell or the house we wanted would sell and it just kept flipping and nothing was working. We'd get an accepted offer and then it would fall through based on the sale of our house or our house would sell and the offer would somehow like just something kept going wrong and I remember crying over like three different houses where I was just like god I don't understand like I have six tiny little kids and this newborn baby I'm so sick of trying to show the house I'm so sick of like trying to keep the house clean and and just do everything we had to do and I don't understand but now looking back it was like he was so faithful the whole time because not only did we get a house for like a hundred thousand dollars cheaper <clears throat> than the one that we tried to buy but we actually we got the better house if I could go back now and if I could pick any of those houses that we tried to get that I cried over, I would pick this one. I love this house. There's so many reasons I love this house and I would pick it every time. And not only that, it was the best option for us financially to be in this house. Um, so just remind yourself of all the times that God's come through for you before where it, it seemed like he wasn't listening, where it seemed like he didn't have an answer for you or left you on your own and, and you were just stressed or frustrated about whatever that thing is in front of you. Just remind yourself of all the times that he's been there before. Um, remind yourself of just his love for you. Just how much the Father loves us. He gave everything. He didn't even spare his own son. He didn't even spare Jesus. He gave everything. Like, he would not withhold good from you. Um, for those of you that are praying about things that are really sensitive in other areas, like maybe relationships or whatever, sometimes God answers in different ways because he can't control other people. Right? Sometimes he answers in different ways because... Love has to be totally willful, so he can't overtake somebody and make them do everything that he wants them to do. He gives us free will and free choice, so sometimes the answer doesn't come because of that. And if that's the case, then I just want to encourage you that the times in my life before where I thought my life was falling apart because of something that was out of my control like that, God worked it all out and things got way better than I ever hoped or dared to hope in the moment. So I just want to encourage you. Um, remember, God does not carry the same limits that we do. So sometimes it feels like, you know, we're out of time. Like there's something, ah, like something's got to give right now. And you get that stress or that, that sense of pressure or push. Um, just remember that God, God is so much bigger than, than we can comprehend. And our limits are not his. And he can do anything, anything to change circumstances, to change situations, to change whatever it is that needs to be changed. Like he's not limited in the same way we are. So if it feels like we're out of time for something, or if it feels like, um, he's not answering soon enough, like it's the midnight hour, just remember God can do anything in just, just a second. Um, the other thing that's really, really important is to take your focus off yourself and replace that focus with the focus of other people. So the Great Commission, the gospel, like we're supposed to go out into the world. We're supposed to love on people. We're supposed to tell people about him, right? We're, we're supposed to be at work doing his work. We're supposed to be at work um, sharing the good news and loving other people and loving him first. Sometimes it's easy to get so fixated on our own lives but the real remedy is to look outward at all the people around us. That's the real thing that like lifts your spirits and gives you joy and picks you back up again is when you just intentionally love the people around you. 
even people that are hard to love when you just intentionally love them there's something about it then when you walk away you're just like oh god like thank you I know it was you that helped me to do that because I couldn't have done it otherwise or the old me would have let them have it like do you know what I mean where you just yeah wow god thank you um how can we respond when loved ones or ones that are entrusted to us are in waiting? Uh, so if you continue to read on in this section of 106, towards verse like 20 and beyond, it starts talking about how um, they forgot God their savior who had done such great things in Egypt, such wonderful things in the land of Ham, such awesome deeds at the Red Sea, so he declared he would destroy them. But Moses, his chosen one, stepped between the Lord and the people, and he begged them to turn from his anger and not destroy them. The people refused to enter the pleasant land, for they wouldn't believe his promises to care for them. Ooh, instead, they grumbled in their tents and refused to obey the Lord. Therefore, he solemnly swore that he would kill them in the wilderness, that he would scatter their descendants among the nations, exiling them to distant lands. Um, so we can love people that are going through trials or um, a season of growing patience in their own life by taking our priestly role seriously, by taking our intercession role seriously, and just by um, interceding on behalf of the people, knowing that God's heart is really to love them and knowing that he can use us in the moment um, to remind him. Not that he needs reminding, but I think he created people with that heart and that desire and that ability for a reason. Um, people who plead on behalf of others, people who who genuinely care about others and their position before God and their influential sway um, as a friend of God. Um, the Bible says that we're no longer servants but friends. That a servant doesn't know what his master is doing but a friend does. So as we develop more and more in friendship with God, then just like Moses did, we can approach him on behalf of other people. Um, I experienced that this week, in a sense, from somebody that I greatly respect. Uh, if you continue to read on Psalms 106, it starts going on about how Israel rebelled and they were wicked, 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 like murder, adultery, killing each other, like just doing wicked things, hurting each other, hurting themselves. Um, and if you go down to verse 43, it says, and again, he rescued them. But they chose to rebel against him and they were finally destroyed by their sin. Even so, he pitied them in their distress and listened to their cries. He remembered his covenant with them and he relented because of his unfailing love. He even caused their captors to treat them with kindness. Save us, O Lord our God, gather us back from among the nations so that we may thank your holy name and rejoice and praise you. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives for, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say amen. So God's relentless kindness and love came through yet again, even though the people just grumbled and, and worked against God insistently and sinned against each other and sinned against themselves and sinned against God, yet, yet his kindness and his mercy came through again for the people of Israel. So I just want to take a minute today to just say like how incredibly loving this God is. How wonderful is he that that all these things it lists that they're doing, like sacrificing their own kids and just all these things, yet he still loved them. But I also want to encourage you that we're not called to look like Israel here. We're called to look like the new covenant people. We're called to look like those who have been restored into walking and talking with God in the garden. Where the curse of sin has been broken and things have been restored and, and back into right relationship with God. We're called to live this life of continual repentance and a turning away from wicked things and a turning away from hurting ourselves and hurting each other and a turning to God. Um, I love that I'm noticing that the longer that I know him, the quicker he seems to correct me. 
uh, this week spending that half a day just kind of sulking and just kind of like no energy, not doing any of my work, just kind of sulking. Before he corrected me, it was like, what am I doing? Like, I wasted half a day that I could have spent dancing for my Lord and, and worshiping him and going out to the streets and praying for people and cooking a nice meal for my family. And like, I could have been doing something so much better with my life. Um, the grumbling, the complaining, the sin, none of it brings joy. What really brings joy is obeying God and serving him with our whole hearts. So I hope this encourages you today and I hope that you can relate to some of what I'm saying. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful night and I bless you. And thanks for watching. Fracious G here.